Let's face it everybody, a physical house isn't always necessarily considered a home. A home is a place where you can go and feel a wide range of positive emotions such as happiness, joy, a sense of security, but I think above all, a sense of peace of mind. In today's video, I'm gonna show you nothing more but just an opportunity here in Ocala, Florida. Let's begin my friends. Now, before we step inside of this amazing custom home, I wanna make sure you, the people, have all the information you need to know about this property, the land, the specs on the house, and the location. So just to start things off, this house is gonna come with three bedrooms, three bathrooms, 1,884 square feet with a two-car garage. Now, this house is sitting on 1.14 acres of beautiful land, my friends. Now, the location of this home, we are on, we're here in Ocala, Florida, in a place called Rolling Hills. We are in about southwest Ocala, um, about 10 minutes west of Marion Oaks, which is another community slash subdivision area in Ocala. We're only about 10 to 15 minutes away from Highway 200, which is where you're going to find a lot of your commercial centers. You're going to have your Publix, Walmarts, you know, Earth Fairs, Home Depots, Lowe's all within 10 to 15 minutes away from this specific house. But the coolest thing about this property and what I love about it is that you're only 10 minutes away from the World Equestrian Center, my friends. This is one of only two equestrian centers in the entire world and people come from all over the place, bring their amazing horses and participate in all the horse events we have here. And not only that, it's a great place to just take your family, have a good time. They have a bunch of restaurants, food. They just opened up a hotel. So they got the whole thing going on over there. And last but not least, my friends, on this location, we are only about an hour and 15 minutes away from downtown Orlando and downtown Tampa. So you're relatively close to two major metropolitan cities. So let's say you're here in Ocala living a very peaceful, relaxing life. Let me go do something a little different in a bigger city. You have Orlando, you have Tampa, and then you have Miami about four hours away from here as well. The beaches are about two hours away, Daytona, New Smyrna, Clearwater, and yes, my friends. Now, at the end of this tour, we're gonna be talking about all of the finances. We're gonna be talking about the price, taxes, HOA, CDD. You guys are gonna have all of that information at your hands and at the very end my friends i'm going to be talking to a few of you who maybe are interested in making a move to florida or maybe just trying to make a move in another state i'm going to be giving you fat valuable information that essentially is going to help you know what your credit needs to look like what's the formula lenders are going to use to discover how much your purchasing power can be how much you need for a down payment what the closing costs are and I think more importantly, I'll talk a little bit about how I negotiate amazing deals for all of my clients is make sure I work for you guys and not the sellers and the builders. So I'm gonna be talking a little bit about that at the end, but for now, my friends, let's get inside. Look at this beautiful custom home, come with me. So here we are, my friends, in this beautiful custom home. And first, just small details I wanna to touch on is I love the full glass uh, door that we have here and the glass siding as well. This entire home is gonna be coming with LVP and cer scattered ceramic tile as well. Um, and yeah, so here we are. This is gonna be your main living area, my friends. So right here, this is gonna be the main living area. You're gonna have this nice tray ceilings right above, um, this beautiful extended ceiling fan. And yes, this is what we got right here. We have two beautiful windows looking the front side of the home. Um, also the little patio space in the front as well. So maybe if you wanna relax, wind down at the end of the day, have some coffee, have a glass of wine, a beer, whatever it is, you can go watch the sunset and have a good time. So this is the living room. Over here, we'll find the dining area, the breakfast nook area. And essentially this is a table that can fit eight people right here. And this is a pretty large table. So. Um, this, the, by the way, this furniture is not coming with the home. This is all staged just to give you a perspective on how beautiful this home could look. And obviously you guys have amazing touches, so you're going to make it look even better than what's in here right now. I will tell you the fixtures do come with the house. So this 
Beautiful circular halo fixture right above will be coming with the house. And yeah, so this is gonna be your little dining area. And now let's get into this amazing kitchen. I love the granite. You're gonna have these nice upgraded Whirlpool stainless steel appliances. You're gonna have the fridge right here. You're gonna have the double oven, the microwave, and then the dishwasher right over here. I think what is really beneficial about this kitchen and why it looks so amazing is, one, you're gonna have the crown molding at the top and also um, you're gonna have a window looking out back into probably half an acre of land and the white cabinets just make it pop. You know, it really just kind of gives that tranquility vibe in here. And yeah, so you're gonna have a lot of cabinet space. Um, here's gonna be kind of some extra extended kind of like pantry cabinet space. You do not have like a legit, uh, legitimate uh, pantry, but you have so much cabinet space, I think it makes up for, you know, a pantry, not having the pantry. But anyways, my friends, let's get over to this side of the house and we're gonna take a look into the laundry room right over here. So this is gonna be your laundry. You're gonna have a nice big window looking over the north side of the house. Here, you're gonna have a little extra storage area. Um, one small detail about this home and the builder is that typically when you have a washer and dryer system, you know, the washer can connect and you push it back, but you typically they'll have this thing sticking out, but they're not gonna have like that indention. So essentially what it means is if you have that indention, it's easier to install and you can actually push it all the way back. Typically with some builders, you're gonna have it kind of extended a little further out than if you than the washer. So it just looks a little uneven, unsymmetrical, but with this, it's just a small detail that, you know, to think about. Now, my friends, we are gonna step over here into the garage. This is gonna be a two car garage. And one quick thing I wanna notice is you, this is an extra tall garage. So they know a lot of people have trucks, Jeeps, whatever it is. So you're gonna be able to fit a very tall car um, I, or truck. I don't have the exact number, but you know, it's definitely larger than the typical garage door. Over here, you're gonna have another side entrance into the garage. And yeah, so this is a nice door, kind of makes it easy to enter and exit without having to open the garage. Here's your uh, tankless water heater. And this is also gonna come with a garage door opener as well. So here we are my friends, and now we're stepping into this beautiful master bedroom. This is gonna be 18 by 14 feet, my friends, so a, a very large master. This is a king size bed right here, just to give you a perspective on the size and the spaciousness of the room. Tray ceiling, same ceiling fan as in the living room, so they're keeping up with that pattern and aesthetic throughout the whole entirety of the house. You're gonna have that LVP, and then in the bathroom, you're gonna have this amazing scattered tile uh, throughout, even in, um, it's gonna be a slightly uh, lighter gray in the walk-in shower. But yeah, so here you're gonna have your double vanity, your tub, and this is gonna be your walk-in shower. Feels like you're kind of in a cave and gives you a really good vibe and good energy in here. Um, here's gonna be your tub, nice kind of triangular tub, so you got three different spots. Uh, and here you're gonna have the nice beautiful granite, double vanity, cabinets below, extra storage. Here's your private toilet right over here with this sliding door, makes it convenient and gives you a little bit more privacy. And then in here, my friends, we have amazing large closet space. And yeah, so this is definitely enough space for two people. You know, one side could be for him, one side could be for her. And yeah, so you got a good amount of space in here. And now, Last but not least, we got this nice little linen closet right over here, and that is it. So now we're gonna head over to the other side of the house, check out the last two bedrooms, bathrooms, and then we're gonna head outside. So here we go, stepping on the other side of the house. This is gonna be the west side of the home. Now we're gonna take a right into this room, and we're gonna have a beautiful 15 by 13 bedroom. This is an extra large um, bedroom. You're gonna have a nice window overlooking the south side of the home. You can see the well water. Um, here is gonna be your double door closet. Nice and spacious. And then over here, you're gonna have the same style of bathroom. You're only gonna have one vanity, your toilet. And then here you're gonna have your walk-in shower as well. Same nice scattered ceramic tile in the back. I like this dark aesthetic in the in the bathrooms and then the nice, you know, kind of peaceful tranquility in the in the kitchen. I like the the offset they kind of have going on there. 
And yeah, so this is one bedroom. We got a nice different wood panel ceiling fan. And yes, my friends. So now we're gonna step into the bathroom right over here. Same thing, you know, nice granite, nice cabinets, toilet. The only difference is this has a tub. Um, that one's gonna be walk-in shower. So this is the only tub in the house. You guys see a little bit of natural light coming in from above. Now stepping into the very last bedroom of this house. This is gonna be similar size to the last one, to the second bedroom. The only difference is this is gonna have two windows, one facing the west side of the house and one looking over the north side of the home. Personally, I think when you're looking for a home, you wanna make sure you have something that's gonna bring in tons of natural light. Natural light is not only just giving you vitamin D, but it's just giving you a, a stronger peace of mind. It keeps you happy when you see the sun out, when it's bright, when the sun is shining. And you know, that's why it's amazing living in Florida, to be honest. So here we are, we got the double door closet as well, same size as the second guest room. And what is very cool is this room has an entrance into the bathroom. So right over here, hello, here we are. So you could lock this up, make this even a private bathroom for that home. Maybe you have some family, maybe your parents, maybe some kids, maybe whoever it is, you know, some friends in town, you can lock it up and have it a special room and bathroom just for them. Now, let's go ahead and step outside. Come on. Boom, so here we are outside, my friends. And this is one of the best features about this specific house is you're gonna have this covered patio lanai area. So this is a very, very large space compared to the typical homes we see here in Ocala, Florida. Um, it would only be maybe two to $3,000 to get this screened in, but in my honest opinion, it, it really just gives a refreshing vibe when you just come out here. You have the covered lanai, so you're not just burning hot, but you also have just the freedom and liberty to go into your backyard. Um, I would recommend some ceiling fans out here. You do have a light. I would recommend some additional air conditioning, some sort of AC or fan. Um, but yeah, so this is gonna be your nice covered patio with the concrete. And now let's step into this backyard. This backyard is probably around 0.4 acres of the 1.14 acres. Um, that's just an, a guesstimate in my honest opinion, but I just love the amount of space you have out here. There are a lot of people who, you know, are looking to create self-reliant homes, you know, put solar panels, you know, have well water, be completely self-sustainable, have chicken coops, horses, you know, have your own non-GMO garden. Um, and that's something I plan on doing myself, but I know there are a lot of like minds out there and um, this house gives you all those opportunities to do so. So let's start over here. We have the well. So this is connected to the Florida aquifer. So here in Florida, we have, think about it like there's a lake under the ground of Florida. So essentially this is digging into that lake, scooping up the water and here you have the filter. So it's filtering out all the you know, sediment and all the things that are in that water. It's being filtered out here. And then over here, you have the levers to turn it on and off. And you even have a hose to you know, pretty much get it how you want. And this is all connected to your house as well. This is run by electricity. So if you were looking into that self-sustainable type of you know, house, you could hook up your solar panels, get your solar panels hooked up to specific batteries, and this could be self-reliant off the solar panel energy coming in. Now, my friends, um, one recommendation I would make is here in Florida, we do tend to have some hard water. What that means is there's a little more sediment, there's a little more, a few more chemicals in the water um, than in other states. Now, it's still clean, drinkable water, but they consider hard and soft water. Here in Florida, we have a little bit harder water. So a quick fix is get a water softener. A water softener is just an upgraded kind of filtration system that keeps your water insanely clean. Um, and no matter where you are in the world, I would recommend getting it uh, just you know to have the extra sense of security. Um, and yeah, so one cool topic that I, I was talking to the neighbors right next door and you know we were just chatting a little bit having a good time and we were talking about the pine trees so here in florida we get hurricanes it's just what happens you know some places get earthquakes some places get tornadoes and we have the blessing of getting hurricanes so a lot of people ask okay look at these massive pine trees in the yards like don't they get blown away fall on your house and the answer to that is no that what the pine trees actually the pine trees actually do is they protect your house 
Um, the neighbor here has a good friend who is an arborologist, I believe it's called. And essentially they study plants and trees and all this kind of stuff. And what they said, what she said is that these pine trees will grow and last for hundreds of years. And essentially when a storm comes, they don't snap or break, they bend. They're very, very flexible. The worst that's gonna happen is some branches fall off, but these are very flexible trees. So they're not gonna fall during a hurricane. And essentially we just had two hurricanes this summer and all of these are standing and I barely see any branches on the floor. So it's something that actually protects your home instead of damaging your home. So that's a quick thing uh, to remember, especially if you're looking to move to Florida. Um, and here we are, my friends. This is the entirety of the home, the lot. Please let me know in the comment what you think about this house. What would be some of the upgrades you do in this backyard? What would be some of the, you know, just fun activities you would create out here? Would you do a cabana? Would you build a luxury re resort style pool? Would you build another house? And on to end on a topic like that, this area, Rolling Hills, allows for you to pour more cement, build extra houses, um, and also you can put, you know, uh, what is it, like extra garages. So if you have an RV, maybe you're a truck driver, they have no problem with you setting your truck in the back of the uh, lot and nobody's gonna say anything. So my friends, let's go ahead, get inside, talk about the pricing and all the good stuff. Let's go. So here we are folks at the end of this tour and we're gonna go ahead and get started on all of the information on this specific house. So just to start things off, this property was listed for $488,000 about two months ago. They just reduced the price to $463,000. So this house is $463,000 currently on the market at this moment in time. The estimated taxes for this property is gonna be roughly around $6,000 per year. Now that is before homestead tax exemption. So for anyone who is unfamiliar with homestead tax exemption, anyone moving from out of the state, um, you know, from the state of Florida, if you come to Florida, live here for one year, you're a resident, you can deduct up to $50,000 off the taxable value of your home. Now it could be less, it could be more. Um, there are certain requirements, um, but at the minimum you'll get around 20 to $25,000 off the taxable value of your house. So instead of paying 463 uh, in taxes or 400, paying taxes on a $463,000 home, you can pay it on a $413,000 home. So it's a big bonus. So the price, 463,000, taxes around 6,000 per year or less after the uh, homestead tax exemption. And yeah, this house is not coming with any HOA, no CDD. So there is not a single soul on this planet that can tell you what you can or can't do with this specific property. You can put a workshop, you can put your RVs, you can build another house back there. Um, this is zoned R1, but essentially you can get the permits to do all of these things with no problem or issue here in Ocala, Florida. Now, talking more specifically to the people who are like, hey, I live in a city right now where it's super expensive to buy a little hut for half a million dollars, Miami, LA, New York. And I'm like, hey, I wanna get out of the hustle and bustle. I wanna get in out of the city life, just relax, have a really peaceful life. And this is a perfect place to do so. Um, and not only just that, this is affordable, my friend. So if anyone out there is interested, let's get into the numbers. First and foremost, um, you're gonna see what type of loan you can qualify for. Um, there are two types of loans if you're gonna apply this as a primary residence. Is one, it's gonna be an FHA, and two, it's gonna be a conventional loan. If it's an FHA loan, you need a minimum 580 credit score or above. Um, if you have 580, you, I would recommend, hey, get it up to 640, 650, so you'll get a much more favorable interest rate without having to buy down points. I'll get more into the points a little bit later. Now, for on the conventional side, your credit needs to be a minimum of a 660, 670. Same thing as FHA, I recommend being in the 700s, 800s, but you can qualify with a 660, 670 for a conventional loan. The down payment on an FHA loan is gonna be three and a half percent minimum. So if this house is $463,000, 3.5% is $16,205, my friends. So $16,205 for a down payment on this home. For a conventional, 
down minimum uh, primary residence down payment is going to be 5%. So 463,000 at 5% is gonna be 23,150. Now, why would I go with conventional over FHA? That's an amazing question because on FHA, you're always gonna pay something called private mortgage insurance. Uh, Joe Biden and the administration just actually dropped the PMI, the private mortgage insurance, um, about 30 to 40%. So instead of paying around 200, you're gonna be around 120 to 150, around that range, depending on the house, lot, et cetera. It could range, PMI could be 150 to 300, but they just reduced it, it's probably gonna be around 120 to 150. Um, so that is gonna be the benefit of going with conventional is that you're not gonna have the private mortgage insurance. You're not gonna have the extra 100 or $200 payment um, on top of your mortgage. So conventional, once you hit 20% equity in the house, you don't have to pay any more private mortgage insurance. So let's say maybe you're sitting on a little bit of cash, you wanna buy this house, you put 20% down, you don't have any issues with private mortgage insurance if you're using a conventional loan. Now, let's go ahead and say, hey, how much, how do I know I can, how much I can afford? You know, what does it look like, you know, trying to estimate what kind of house I can purchase and for how much? So I'm gonna give it to you very, very simple. And this is with uh, talking, if you put a minimum down payment and you're gonna do the maximum loan amount uh, possible. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna add your income. So if you and your wife are coming together or whatever it is, you wanna add, combine your income. So let's say your income is $70,000 per year. So you're gonna do $70,000 and then you're gonna divide it by 12. That's gonna give you $5,833 per month. That is your monthly income. Once you have your monthly income, you wanna divide that number by two, okay? And that's gonna give you $2,916. Now, when you have the $2,916, the only thing you need to do from this is subtract your debts. Now, when I say debts, that means your car payments, uh, that means your boat payments, that means student loans, you know, all of the above. Anything that you are financing and paying back, credit cards, um, you need to add that monthly payment and subtract it from here. So let's say you have a $200 car payment and $300 in student loans. So I'm gonna subtract $500 and here we are. We're at $2,416. So from here to get the actual purchase price number, you wanna divide this by 0 0.007. We're gonna, we're gonna go James Bond this thing. So divided by 0 0.007, and that gives you a purchase price of $345,000. Now this is not exact. This is gonna be a, a rough estimate. You know, it could be 20, 30,000 below, 20, 30,000 more. If you put a higher down payment, you're gonna be able to afford a lot more as well. So this is just on the basics, just to give you an idea of what you can afford. Um, and remember this number is if you put just minimum down and looking to get a maximum, you know, a, a bigger loan, um, you know, utilizing about 95 or 96.5% of the house in financing. So that is essentially the formula for figuring out how much you can afford for the house. You have the FHA, you have the conventional, what your credit needs to look like, what the down payment's gonna be. Now let's talk about closing costs. That is gonna be the final thing we're talking about today. The closing cost for this house um, is typically around three to 4%. And that's with any house, not this specific house. Closing costs are gonna be three to 4% of the house. Now this is a private builder. They built this custom home. So they don't have a preferred lender that's gonna give you 10, $15,000 off um, for using the preferred lender. So essentially the way you're gonna get those closing costs covered is you work with a great realtor that's gonna fight to get to negotiate the sellers to pay for your closing costs. So let's say closing costs, I'm gonna put it at a very high range at 4%. So let's do 463,000 times 4%. That's $18,520. My goal as your realtor is to fight with the sellers and say, hey, look, you know, my clients, they're, you know, they like the house, they're interested, but it really needs to be at the right price. You know, right now they're a little bit strapped on cash, but you know, they really wanna make it work. Um, we're gonna need about four to 5% help in closing costs. So if you can make that happen, you know, I think we can strike a deal. And let me tell you something, my friends, every single time it, we do it, it works, it works. 
all my clients have been getting at least some sort of closing cost help, or if they're buying cash, they're getting amazing deals on the houses. So there are so many different ways to negotiate, but it's all dependent on your finances. If you prefer getting more uh, money towards the cash to close and put a little more money in your pocket, I will negotiate towards that. If you're paying cash, I'm gonna just negotiate as low as a purchase price as possible. You know, I'll maybe come in and say, hey, you know, my clients, they like the house, you know, they're not crazy about it, but they do wanna, they are interested in putting in an offer and seeing if we can come up with the right price, obviously for the buyer and the seller. You know, do you think, is, is the sellers a little flexible to make this thing happen or are they pretty strict with the price? In this market, we're in a, we're in a buyer's market, my friends. Technically, we're in a seller's market, but it's transitioning into a buyer's market, meaning there are more houses on the market than there are buyers on the market. So essentially, who has the control in that situation? The buyers, because they can pick and choose which house they want, and the sellers are just a little bit more desperate to sell. Homes are staying on the market a little bit longer right now. New construction homes, depending on, if they list it from the time it's finished and they put it on the market and it's 30, 50 days on the market, you can start negotiating amazing deals, my friends. So it's all about working with the right person, understanding what they are doing and how we can best help you. So with that, my friends, that is it. I am finished for this video. If you guys like this video, make sure to just check out my past content. You know, I have a ton, a ton of videos where I'm showing different types of homes. I have homes starting in the 240, 50,000 price range. So if you're interested in more content, more homes just like this one, more information just like this, check out my past content and I know you guys will love it. So with that, my friends, if anyone's interested in uh, contacting me, maybe looking to make a move here to Florida, I'm your guy, I'm here to fight for you and be an aggressive realtor to make things happen. Here is my information, my phone number, and feel free to reach out. With that, we are good to go and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.